Colorado. Now here's Schwartz at three, and he knocks that in. I think of being in attack mode. They are going at the Colorado defense. Schwartz at three. Why not? Set. Schwartz, try this one again. That time it goes. A great setup by Wright. And, you know, Kim Wright right, finds the man open. It's Schwartz. Who nails the three? There's a few highlights from the victory by the Colorado Buffaloes to improve to 7-0s. They knocked off Loyola Marymount here at the CU Event Center. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Deshaun Schwartz joining us here for a couple minutes. Buffaloes win that one, fall on the road against Kansas in a uh, tough game with the second-ranked team in the country, and then caught a fall in a shocker to Northern Iowa here at the Event Center. Just a quick comment or two about that LMU uh, ball game. You guys proved to be 7-0. You had 17 in that ball game. Bus playing pretty well at that point, right? Yeah, it was a pretty fun game, good atmosphere. Um, they're a really good team, and we pulled that one out. But along with that being said, the offensive struggles started to kind of creep in with this ball game. What, what are you kind of sensing? Uh, what's going on offensively for the Buffaloes right now? I think we're just a little bit too tense on the offensive end. Mm -hmm. um, we're making a lot of out-of-character mistakes that we weren't seeing early in the year. We're just not executing right. as well as we could be. You know, that, that's the funny thing about the game of basketball. And we, we saw it against LW. Buffs get the win against uh, that team. But when you, it's kind of little things, isn't it, in terms of a sloppy pass or maybe not a sharp cut or, or those kind of things that can really start to creep into an offense, can't it? Yeah, I think that um, little things really trigger big things, such as, you, like you said, uh, bad passes. You might not make a shot. Yeah. Um, spacing was a really big deal in the Kansas game, and we just got to really tighten up these things. Yeah. How about your game right now? Uh, I know you've been shooting very well up until that Kansas game, right? Talk a little bit about the way the ball's coming off your hand right now. Um, just trying to focus on the next shot. Yeah. Um, trying to make sure the next one goes in. Yeah. We got a term called regression to the mean, so you, you missed that many. I should make a couple more in the next one. <laughs> right, you kind of feel that. And Buffalo's uh, sitting now at 7-2 and two in the season. Chances are by Monday they'd follow the top 25, and they've got a challenging schedule still to come. By the way, we went behind the scenes with the Buffaloes in that game here at the Event Center against Loyola Marymount. This is a game, all we have to do is do what we do. And do it well, execute, move the ball, play for each other. Let's go get it. at a time, one stop at a time. Great possessions on offense, rock solid on defense. Okay, it's not a complicated deal. We're fine, but we have got to play the way we are capable of playing. Play with confidence on offense. We're a good offensive team, guys. We are. We just gotta start playing like it. behind the scenes with the Buffaloes after the victory for LMU and then the Buffs went on the road and lost to number two Kansas by 14 at Allen Fieldhouse and then of course falling to you and I will talk more about that here in just a moment. How about that atmosphere you walked into at Allen Fieldhouse? That's a little bit of an intimidating place isn't it? 
It's crazy. It's uh, the basketball mecca, so to speak, and yeah. uh, it's great to have opportunity to play there. That is at a good shooter's gym, and I asked that because the Buffs had a tough time shooting the basketball there. What was your sense when you walked in that building? Everything felt good. Yeah. Uh, up until the tip-off, then things kind of got real. Yeah. Um, that's something you kind of sense with the crowd and the energy in there. All right. The challenge of this team now after dropping two in a row, you got a tough one coming up against Colorado State on Friday night up at Fort Collins. But this is kind of a rallying point for you guys right now, isn't it? Yeah, we got to um, go back to the drawing board and just figure out what we need to do to turn our season back around. This game here uh, against uh, Northern Iowa, you knew coming in, and you guys got the scouting report, you knew they were a good three-point shooting team. They were able to find some rhythm. So talk about defensively how tough it was against them. Um, it's really difficult when you got a good ball screen handler um, coming off the ball screen, and then you got a big that you got to honor. Um, it makes it hard to guard both the bigs and the shooters. Yeah. Um, it's just something, something we got to work on and figure out. This game against Northern Iowa was the first time this season, nine games, you guys have not won second chance points. I've always looked at that as a stat that's kind of a gritty statistic. It kind of shows the, you know, grinding it out. You guys have been very good in that regard. What happened with this ball game, do you think? Yeah, I think they just, um, they obviously out rebounded us and they got some good ones, put them back in. It was, it was tough for us. Yeah. Take us back in the locker room. What, what are you guys talking about amongst yourselves? Trying to keep our heads up, trying to keep our spirits high. Yeah. Uh, remember that it's a long season. Right. All right. Well, good luck uh, coming up on Friday, Colorado State. Appreciate that. All right. Deshaun Schwartz, Ian of Buffalo, is now sitting at 7-2 and after the loss to the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Coming up next, assistant coach Bill Creer is going to join us after this. All not fouling. Seward sets up. And that work from Brazil. Very capable of doing that. Heat. Uh, University of Washington, the way that BYU took down UCLA. And three in a row! That is indefensible inside. Lucas Seward. Lucas Seward going here. on himself. Oh Lucas Seward. Bring your credit card. <laughs> we'll be signing autographs and taking pictures. Oh, there it is. Seward. Beautiful. And that's the lead. And a career. Well, there's some highlights from the Colorado Buffaloes. Three-point loss to Northern Iowa here at the event center. Buffaloes now 7-2 and two in the season, back in the stampede. Voice of the Buffs, assistant coach Bill Greer joining us for a couple of minutes at the UNI game. That, that's one of those games from a fan perspective. Maybe it doesn't catch your eye, but anyone in the basketball world knows what Northern Iowa is all about, and they proved it tonight. Yeah, they, they've had such a good program over the years, and, and Ben's been there a long time. He's He's won a lot of games like this against Power yeah. Five conferences. Um, he beat a number one seed in the NCAA tournament not too long ago. That's right. So uh, it's a really, really good program. I think they showed tremendous toughness and, and um, their ability to shoot the ball. At the end of the day, we didn't do a good enough job taking away their strength. You know, when Tad talked to us on the radio on the Colorado <laughs> Basketball Network in the postgame, he said, you know, we do a scouting report. Maybe we, th we should think about not doing that, he said, because it's not <laughs> translating from the paper to the team. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> frustrating. We have such good guys, but, um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. We, we kind of lose some concentration. We get out there in the flow of the game, and, and – um, to give them as many threes as we did in our yeah. own building. Um, they went on a 19-0 run from the end of the first half through the start of the second That's half. That's right. That can't happen in your building. Yeah, yeah, without question. And they ended the game, by the way, in a 6-0 run, in fact, uh, to win this one uh, by three. The second chance point number, it's always been one I've thought about. It's kind of a gritty stat, right? It gets down to kind of teams <laughs> battling down there. It's the first time this season Colorado didn't win that category. Yeah, it's something that we really pride ourselves on is, is rebounding, and particularly at the defensive end. And we have been one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country. Mm -hmm. We weren't tonight. Yeah. And, you know, they got us spread out because of their ability to shoot. Uh, they're they're five-man both did such a great job just kind of burying us under there and going up and getting offensive rebounds. And they were very physical. We just we just didn't do a good enough job. The Buffaloes dropped their second straight ball game. Let's go ahead and check out postgame comments from head coach Tad Boyle. Uh, extremely disappointing uh, loss. I thought we fought hard in the second half to come back and take the lead, but we just uh, our attention to detail is just not, not good enough right now. That was really evident tonight, I thought, by um, – the way we guarded uh, stretches in the game where we just kind of fell asleep and expected good things to happen. You have to make good things happen for yourselves. And that's what Northern Iowa did. Uh, Northern Iowa out-executed us tonight. They deserved to win. We did not. 
and uh, my hat's off to them, but uh, I'm really, really disappointed in our attention to detail. There's comments from the head coach of the Buffaloes after they fall by 379-76 to Northern Iowa, sit at 7-2 ahead of the game with Colorado State coming up this weekend. Are our teams, and we continue with Bill Greer, by the way, assistant coach for the Buffaloes, are, are they starting to really pack the paint against the Buffaloes? Yeah, I mean, certain teams, that's that's certainly the way Northern Iowa defends and, and other teams that we have faced uh, play like that. Arizona State was a team that pressures out, right. you know, so you, as a player – you have to be able to adjust to different styles. Um, that's where we have to have better ball movement. And I think sometimes we've had some possessions where it's great ball movement. We make a second and third pass. And other times it'll stick. And yeah. we're trying to take guys one-on-one -on -one and we're not moving anybody and there's a guy sitting in the gap. So that is where we have to grow as a team to get better offensively. You know, you talk about ball movement. Another thing is not just sticking, but when it stays on one side of the floor, you might bring it back on top and then it goes back, and it really doesn't stress the defense then, does it? No, no, it really doesn't. It doesn't make them go from strong side to help side and make them move. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something Coach really stressed yesterday with our with our group in practice on that this is what we have to do to beat this team. The ball has to go from one side to the other, a paint touch, and then we can get good shots. And, and uh, we had some of those possessions. Yeah. We just yep. didn't have enough of them. Right. The Buffaloes have now dropped two in a row. This becomes kind of a gut check time for a team, doesn't oh, it? Oh, no question. No yeah. question. And, uh, you know, going on the road, and, and it'll be a hostile environment, as, as we all know. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, tough place to play, and, and we've got to, you know, we can't feel sorry for ourselves right now. We've got to get back to work and get ourselves ready to go for that game. Yeah. How about the turnover issue for the Buffaloes? What are you seeing there? A lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many. Yeah. And, I, and I think, again, it goes back to we're, 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 you know, taking too many tough plays, trying to take it on ourselves instead of moving the ball yeah. enough. All right, we appreciate the time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You bet. Assistant Coach Bill Greer joining us. Buffalo's at 7-2 as they fall to Northern Iowa here at the event center. Coming up next, we're going to talk with Emma Clark from the undefeated women's basketball team next. Here, Jones is on her, gets a pick, dribbles left, jumper from 17, and she'll knock it down. And the Buffs fans can cheer and then sit down. Maya catches up top, the jumper up, she'll knock it down. Just outside the free throw line, she got her own miss, went up with it, couldn't get that to go. Clark comes down with the offensive board, kicks it off the glass for two. Well, there's some highlights as the Colorado women's basketball team continues to roll unblemished at eight now. There's some highlights of the victory over Texas Southern boys to the bus, Mark Johnson, here in the women's locker room. Beautiful in here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Emma Clark, by the way, who's playing some fantastic basketball. Yeah, they, they've done a great job with this, the signage and all the wall wraps. and. You know, yeah, that's important for a student athlete when they're coming in. You want, you want a place that, because you spend so much time here, you want to feel at home, don't you? Spend a lot of time in here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the Buffaloes right now, 8 no, as we mentioned. Let's go back to the game against uh, Texas Southern. Give us a thought or two about that one. Playing some very good basketball right now. Oh, thank you. Um, it was a really good game. Um, you know, we were, um, you know, playing playing good in the first quarter, good in the second, and then we regrouped in the re regrouped at halftime, and then came back and finished strong. You went 17 of that one. The following game against Xavier, also a victory for the Buffaloes. You had 19. What's going on with your game? I mean, you're really growing as a player in your sophomore season. Yeah, I just think I'm a lot more confident in my game mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's where are you growing? Is the shot coming along? Understanding the system better? What is it? Yeah, shots coming along. Um, I didn't shoot too great at the start of the season, but you know, I'm believing in myself a little bit more and just having confidence and trust in my teammates. I think that's something that a lot of times folks, in fact, folks don't think about. When you come to this play at this level, everyone's a good player. Yeah. When you get here, you find that out, but there becomes a mental aspect about, wow, am I really as good as everybody around me? Mm -hmm. And so confidence becomes a big thing by the time you, you play your second season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last year, I probably wasn't as confident as I am this year, but, you know, with Lex and Ken gone, and, you know, we need just more scores and, you know, more contribution from everyone. So mm -hmm. just trying to do the best I can. How much from a coaching standpoint? Do the coaches talk to you about that? About, yeah. Hey, now, now you're growing up. You're not a freshman anymore. Mm -hmm. It's time to elevate your game. Yeah, um, you know, before the before the season starts, we have roles, and one of mine is, you know, sh shoot with no hesitation. So I've really okay. been trying to incorporate that into practices and more in games. There's a responsibility that comes with that, isn't there? Yeah. Shoot with confidence, and when you've got the shot, you don't want to abuse that and take bad shots, though. I know, yeah. Um, shot selection's been something I've been working on at practice a lot, and it's really been contributing into the games. As this team continues to roll and, you know, get one victory after another, sitting at 8-0 right now, I'd imagine 
the confidence as the team then begins to grow as well. Yeah, we're we are confident as a team right now. Um, we're excited for you know with Pac-12 starting soon and to, um, our tournament in New Orleans. So yeah, we're we're excited. So it was a great victory over the Texas Southern team, and afterward we caught up with head coach J.R. Payne and Maya Hollingshed. We knew that this game would, would be sort of a game of runs and sort of sporadic play. I thought we did some really good things, you know, and kind of kept our composure for the most part against a really, really athletic team. So, but I thought we did a good job of making some adjustments on the floor. Uh, our rebounding effort was tremendous. The out rebound by 17. Um, we, you know, we continue to rebound the basketball and, and then just a lot of really good sort of smart individual effort. Thought it was a good game tonight. Yeah, we knew um, coming in that they would try to swipe at the balls when we get rebounds. So we, our goal was to get on the glass and keep the ball high. But also since they were a smaller group, um, we did, definitely had an advantage coming into the game. I didn't even know I was had a double-double to the end of the game. So I think I was just trying to get to the glass, get rebounds, and just keep them limited their um, offensive opportunities. Head coach J.R. Payne and Mile Holling should after the victory over Texas Southern. Buffalo's next were on the road, heading to the Queen City in Cincinnati, Ohio, to take on Xavier. Also a victory and another career high with you for you with 19 points. Yeah. <laughs> a road trip like that. Uh, is there a little bit of us against the world when you get on the road like that? Yeah, you know, it was our first like road trip, like, you know, flying. So we were all really excited. Yeah, well, the Buffs do well in that game. Um, I mean, it wasn't a pretty game, but right. <laughs> um, I think we just stayed together up through the ups and downs. It's always pretty when you win, though. Yeah, right? it was nice. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. Is this a close basketball team? Yeah, I we mean, are. In terms of the, the, the roster, do you guys hang around each other? And yeah, off the court. Um, on the court, we have a great time. And, you know, in the locker room and on weekends when we have days off, we're always Does that out. help with a basketball team? Because I, I, I asked this question. It may seem, seem, seem simplistic. I've been around teams that I thought really didn't like each other. Yeah. Is it important to like each other? Does that help them on the court? I definitely think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Buffaloes now on the road, by the way, they're heading down to Tulane, down to the, uh, Louisiana for a big event this weekend. That'll be a bit of a challenge now. It's, it's kind of an event, a little tournament. Yeah. Uh, give us a thought or two about that. I think we're all really excited. Um, you know, first tournament this year. Um, you know, we're going to be spending a lot of time together, and we're going to have a tough opponent, tough opponents. So, um, yeah, we are excited. You're a sophomore. Who do you follow on this team? Who do I follow? Yeah. I mean, Quinessa, the lone senior. You know, right. we got Maya. Aubrey's a great team leader and team captain on and off the court. So, I'd say there's a lot of people on the team. That do we you as a to. sophomore? Uh, speak up every once in a while, try and be a vocal leader? Yeah, sometimes. I'm, yeah. I'm not too vocal. Um, but, you know, I'll tell people if, you know, when they're doing good and when they're doing bad. Right. Yeah. How does that normally go across, being an underclassman? Um, you know, it can be taken um, different ways, but we talked about it in, you know, the preseason about, you know, taking criticism positively and not, like, taking it to heart. Yeah. Right. Well, I like it. You guys are playing very well. Thank right. you. Uh, success breeds success, doesn't it? Definitely. <laughs> Yes. Buffaloes now in Adelaide. Good luck this weekend down in Louisiana. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. It. Emma Clark and the Buffaloes, 8-0 and on the season. They've been outstanding so far. One of the handful of unblemished teams left in the country. Of course, just after the first of the year, they'll jump into Pac-12 conference play. But this weekend on the road against UAB and Tulane down in Louisiana. Coming up next, we'll continue women's basketball. Pina Tuatele is going to join us after the break. Former Buffalo Alexi Robinson getting a chance to play professionally in Belarus back in the Stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Pina Tuatela. That's great news for Lex, isn't it? Yeah, that's wonderful news. I'm so happy and proud of Lex for getting another opportunity to play yeah. a sport she loves Ex overseas. Like, what's better than that? I know. Wouldn't that be she great? She gets to travel the world yeah. and gets to play the game she loves. They and, like, pick up the new tab. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Car, housing. It's like, a great what's deal. What's better than that? Yeah. You, you stay in contact with, with, well, Lex has been around here, so I'm sure you've seen her, but how about like Kennedy playing overseas right now? Um, I'm really proud of her. I've seen yeah. like articles about her doing really well, like, yeah with her game and just, you know, progressing as a better player and a better person in Germany. And I'm um, happy that she's happy where she's at. Yeah. We were going to take a quiz about where Belarus is. I don't uh, know where that is. No, well, so Pina goes to see you, so she probably knows. I know that I don't know. I couldn't pick it up uh, the map right know. now. I think Russia. I don't know. Yeah, somewhere over there, anyway. But uh, good news for Alexi Robinson. Well, you guys are playing some fantastic ball right now. Eight no. I know. How about it, huh? Last year wasn't what we expected yeah. and I think a lot of the veterans have like more motivation and we're more driven to do better this year not only for like the school our team but like also the coaches they put in a lot of work and blueprints and a lot of people don't know that and so it's us that project what they sure know and so I think 
um, you know, we took it personal, and we want to do better this year as a team. Well, you and I talked yeah, here, I think, a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, maybe on the show, about, about you staying here over the summer yeah. and the commitment. And I think that that's kind of bled through the team, hasn't it, that, that kind of recommitment to be better this year? Yes, it has. Um, you know, it, it was a hard pill to swallow, but um, we've done better this year. We're more close. We're connected. And I think that's carried on, in the, court, on the court, and you can see it. We're, um, you know, it's a family. Yeah. You know, that last ball game against Xavier, you had you had five for five. I think you had ten points in that ball game. Playing some very efficient basketball right now. You feel good on the court? Oh, I feel great. Yeah. Um, I was breathing because we were at sea level, <laughs> so <laughs> I feel good. Um, See, all that training here at a mile high is awesome, isn't it? <laughs> it pays off when you're at sea level. By the way, being that it is the holiday season, the Buff quarterbacks in the football program went out and spread a little holiday cheer at the Boulder Community Food Share recently. We're at the Boulder Community Food Share. Um, and learned that one in nine people in the Boulder Broomfield community uh, deal with uh, hunger. Um, so we're out here at a local food bank basically that allows people in need uh, to get the food they need to feed themselves and their families. So one of the great things the Boulder Community Food Share does is um, they provide at least 70% of their food um, is all fresh, um, whether it's fresh fruit or fresh meat, um, all that's still good and can be redistributed to uh, people in need. So we're out here sorting potatoes, uh, sorting out the bad ones from the good ones. Um, you know, it, it's busy work, but it needs to be done. Um, you know, for a organization that relies on volunteers, um, even the little nitty gritty uh, stuff needs to get done and we're here and happy to help. It's always uh, good to get out here in the community and give back. Um, you know, Boulder gives so much to us, um, the Buffaloes as a community on game day and throughout the year with so much support. Uh, so the least we could do is give back. Ah, they're the quarterbacks of the football team of the Boulder Community Food Share helping out this holiday season. Those fellas are always giving, aren't they? Yes. Well, they're quarterbacks. They throw the football. They, that's <laughs> what they do naturally. They give all the time. So congratulations uh, for them. Hey, back to the game at Dead Xavier a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, first true road test for the Buffaloes. Yes. You know, I had to jump on a plane, head all the way to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's always a challenge. It is a challenge, but it's business. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't let um, jet lag or fatigue on a plane get in the way of how you play. And I think it did a little bit with our turnover ratio. We had 28. And as a young ball club, um, it's a learning experience for us. Like, we need to learn how to take care of the ball better, especially on the road, since that was a struggle for us. Yeah, the turnover thing, and in fact, that's been both the men's and women's team here lately. What's what's going on there with you guys a little bit? Some careless uh, passes, uh, sloppy with the basketball, or what's happening? Um, I just think we're a little sloppy at, mo at times, and um, we force things, so I think we need to be patient and see what's open and see what's given. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're learning throughout the course of the season, and I think as time goes, we'll do better. You know, you made such a great impact on this team a year ago. Emma Clark, we just had on here, she's growing she up as a player. Is, she's I coming along, isn't she? very proud of them. Yeah. She has come a long way. She's shooting a lot more with confidence, and that's what we need from her. We need her to shoot the ball. Yeah. And when she's hot, let it rip, girl. That, Just that's, let that's, it. I like that. I'll let it rip, girl. Uh, that, that's one of the neat things about this team. There's so many different players who have come up big in different games. I mean, it really is a, a deep team, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's. I think it's deep. Like, we don't have a Lexi or a Kennedy like we did last year. Um, there's different pieces of our team that benefits in different games. And you can see throughout the games we've had, like Jalen's performance, sure. Sila, everyone has had some, like, moment of performance. And I think um, – that's kind of a scary thing to have. You have a, we have a deep bench. We don't rely sure. on five people, two people, one. It's all 13. Well, you've got your final home game of 2019 with DU coming out on Thursday. Give us, give us a quick thought about that. Um, I think it's going to be an exciting game. It's always fun playing in-state basketball, um, and it's going to be a good way to end 2019. Well, good luck against the DU Pioneers and then heading down to Louisiana for that event at Tulane. I'm Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson, as we put around this week on a Buffalo Stampede. We'll talk to you next time.